Well, welcome back to Bravo Movie Reviews. We're going to do a movie review today on The Bubble. It's a new movie out on Netflix. It's reached number four already in the top ten. Again, a 2022 movie coming out. It's already out. It's funny as hell. I tell you, I do like this movie. So first off, I am a big fan of Karen Gillan. She's the star of the movie. I'm a fan of hers from her days on Doctor Who. You know, the Doctor Who series where she played Amy Pond, 2010 to 2013. The camera really, really loves that girl, and so do I. She is a great actress. I'm, and if she's in a movie, I'll probably watch it just for her. So The Bubble is a comedy, and it makes fun of all the ridiculous things that the elite scum at the top made all the working people do at the bottom during the last two years in the pandemic. And of course, in this movie, they kind of try to tell you that the actors are kind of like low on the pecking order. Actors are down there with the working people, apparently. So, um, so again, the bubble is number four on the top ten list on Netflix today, and today is April 4th, 2022. So let's get started with the first funny part of the movie and that's in the first one minute i mean right off the bat right out of the gate it gets real funny so here you got the uh producer he's going to talk to he's talking to a couple of the new set boys that are coming on to the set remember the set is a bubble because it's a pandemic out there nobody's really making movies but this company decided to make a movie and they're going to make it in a bubble meaning once you get tested you don't have to wear your mask. It's a sanctuary. It's a bubble, and all the actors are going to be safe in there. But uh, so these new these these two new guys, they're not actors. Again, they're, they they they'll work on a set. They're going to be handling the actors. So before I before we get into the joke, I'll tell you. I mean, we already know. Everybody already knows that actors are sensitive artist type. They are weird. They are prima donnas. They are immature. They are egotistical, they are narcissists, they are insecure, and most of them are on drugs and alcohol. So we already know that actors are problems. So that's what makes this first part so funny, because we know it's all true. All right, here we are. So the producer on the right there, he says, I am the producer on this movie, and here's what I expect from you. And he's very serious, and he's uh, in command of the situation, and these are his underlings, and... And he says, first off, actors are animals. Sometimes they'll want to play with you. And other times, they'll rip your balls off. <laughs> so the producer and his assistant, who is right beside him, they go back and forth just hammering the actors, trying to let these two new guys know, actors are not special. Don't listen to them. Don't listen to anything they say. They're liars. They're, they literally lie for a living. That's their literal job. They lie. So the producer and her, they just go back and forth. They're very insecure people. They need constant praise. Just tell them they're really great on the movie and don't listen to a word they say. And finally, these new guys, they get it. Make them feel good. Don't tire them out. Don't fuck them. <laughs> the beginning, the, the first part, I mean, you got to see it. It is really funny, the first part. So what makes a good movie? I'll tell you what makes a good movie. Character, characters that have serious issues. Characters that have problems. They are weird. They're just not normal. This is what makes good movies. You just got people with problems, okay? This, mo this movie has all the usual suspects of weirdos, okay? We love to watch movies where humans are in pain and suffering with their issues and idiosyncrasies and anyhow uh amy pond here she doesn't really want to do this stupid dinosaur movie she's an actress she's one of the lead actresses in the movie and um she doesn't want to do this dinosaur six movie but anyhow her agent talks her into it imagine that agents manipulating actresses and actors imagine that so anyhow amy pond says put me in the bubble and off to the bubble she goes. She's going to be in the movie. And um, lo and behold, when they get there, <laughs> they're in a tent. And um, 
they're going to put a stick up her nose. You see, that's why I love this movie. It makes fun of the last two years of this silly pandemic. They had to take your temperature. <laughs> they got to put a stick up your nose. Oh, we got to test for the virus when they're really just collecting your DNA up in your nose. I cannot believe all the peasants agreed to having these sticks put up their noses and just to work as a slave. I would say, screw you, screw it. Screw your job. Take your job and shove it. You don't pay me enough, assholes. But it just, it just, um, you know, it amazed me how all the workers just went with it. Oh, I need the money. I got to pay my mortgage. Got to pay this. Got to pay that. You know, I'm, I, you know, I got to tell you, as a disclaimer, I escaped the Matrix. And uh, you, once you escape the Matrix... You are much, much happier. But uh, I don't want to go into that. The main thing is the peasants agreed to have the sticks put up their nose. And this is all part of the movie. It's a comedy and it's funny. Okay, so after they take her temperature, put a stick up her nose, basically treat her like a peasant and a slave, and they take her to her room and they say, see you in two weeks. <laughs> so they're prisoners in their room for two weeks before they can actually get working again. Oh, man, this pandemic. What a joke it was, huh? What a silly joke. So, well, we talk about China and TikTok taking over the world. Well, it's in the movie. <laughs> Here's this little girl, and she's not really an actress, but they've hired her to play in the movie because she has 100 million fans on TikTok. So hire the little princess. Okay. And then the little princess tells somebody wants to take the, take her picture, and the little princess says, "Oh, you got to talk to my mommy before you talk to me. You got to talk to my mommy." So the movie makes fun of this new world we live in, where China's in charge. I like this actress here. She's she the camera likes her. I like her. She's playing uh, the ex-wife of David, Mister X Files, Du Cho 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 Novi. He's in the movie. I like him too. There he is on the right. So they're like. Hus ex husband and wife they played in the previous series and the movies but now they're divorced and again these actors and actresses have issues they got problems and they're bringing it all to the set they're bringing it all to the bubble that's what makes it funny lots of good characters in this movie really lots of good actors and actresses i like this russian girl too she says why you look at me with these weird eyes <laughs> she's funny and she has a good part in there. I think, I'm not even sure if she's Russian. I think Hollywood just hires Ukrainians, right? I mean, I'm not, <laughs> okay, no Ukrainian jokes. But she, you know, she has that Russian accent or something. Hey, I like her. She's good. Why you look at me with those weird eyes? Because he likes you. So the next funny part is sort of a Hollywood inside joke. The director, or no, the producer is introducing the director to the actor. Uh, during a dinner party and he says okay here's our new director and his, his last job was at Home Depot <laughs> yeah basically you know you can work at Home Depot and be a director is what he's trying to say it's funny the director I mean what can we say I mean he's real he's not the sharpest pencil on the desk that's for sure so he says okay this is your car but I'm gonna step in and take the wheel and we're going to be heading towards the railing a couple times. We might even hit the railing. It's going to be crazy. Some of you might not survive. And <laughs> it's going to be a crazy ride. And like I said, this director is a little strange. And the actor on the left says, uh, we're fucked. And of course, then after that, they t you know, they do another TikTok dance scene. I got to tell you, the, the girl can dance. But, um, but I tell you, China, this China money promoting TikTok on Hollywood, every time you look around, I mean, wow, China must really have a whole lot of money to be throwing around Hollywood, you know, because they're they're constantly promoting this TikTok shit. It's uh, it's it's just weird. All right, well, I don't want to ruin the movie for you. I'm not going to tell you too much about it. I started making this movie review. It was what 8:15 on Monday night. And now it's about 9.45. So I've been working on this uh, movie review for about an hour and a half. 
with cutting clips and commentating. And quite frankly, uh, YouTube doesn't pay me for these reviews. I mean, I get, what, maybe 100 hits and not a penny. So we're going to have to cut this, uh, cut this off. And uh, In closing, I like this movie a lot. It makes fun of Hollywood. It makes fun of the pandemic. I give this movie a 7 out of 10 bravos. I mean, I might even watch it again. It was that funny.